Hi everyone, the sun is shining today so I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to paint a river scene. Now the last set of videos I did focused entirely on the easel with the camera filming almost every brush stroke of the painting. However in this video I thought I'd do something rather different and focus instead on some of the other aspects which go into preparing a painting. So I'm going to head out now and take some reference photos of this great view of the River X that I've driven past many times. OK, let's go check it out. Hey everyone, I'm on the outskirts of Exeter on the Crediton Road. I'm just going to try and get a few reference photos of this great view from the bridge. But as you can see, there's no footway for the next 70 yards. And the traffic here is pretty fast, but it's a pretty cool view. Uh, another section of the River X, so we'll see how we go. I'm gonna cross the road now. Have to be quick. So I'm going to have to time this so I don't get run over. Here we go, crossing the bridge. Geez, need to get into the wall here. It's pretty hairy. Okay, but look at this view. It is so beautiful here. Okay, so that was a little bit hairy, uh, but pretty much worth it. It's crazy traffic here. Okay, so that was a little bit risky, but the views were spectacular. So I'm gonna head back to the studio now and do a few paintings based on the photos that I took. As you can see, no way to set up the easel to paint from life, not without blocking the road anyway. Okay, let's head back to the studio. All right, I've just got back and having looked at the footage, as you may have noticed, I perhaps made things a little more dramatic than they needed to be when it comes to describing taking some photographs of a river from a bridge. Nevertheless, the reference photos came out well, so the next step is to do some quick thumbnail sketches. OK, so on the first thumbnail sketch, you can see I've uh, just very loosely and very simply laid out the composition of the scene. And I've done that using very simple shapes to represent the bushes and hedges. And one of the most interesting things I think about this view is the sloping horizon line. The next sketch I did was uh, this square one here. And not so keen on that one at the moment. I still prefer sketch one. But then I switched to this elongated tall and narrow aspect ratio. And that's always a fun thing to try. Uh, I've done several paintings like this featuring animals and landscapes. And it really forces you to kind of squeeze the composition in and also be selective in terms of what you're going to paint. And while I do quite like this one, I think it's quite interesting having the horizon line up so high and then this huge expanse of water and in fact, I may actually do a painting of this at some point in the future. For now, my favourite one, I think, is this one here. So it's a, uh, a near conventional sort of landscape aspect ratio, but the horizon line is squeezed up even higher than in the first sketch. So there's just this little bit of sky here. And because the horizon is sloping, that makes a nice, interesting shape. And it leaves us a good bit of room to include the river and the surrounding hills and countryside. So, uh, oh, this one here is just a, uh, a slightly elongated version, not as tall and narrow as the one I talked about previously. And this bottom one is quite a wide panoramic scene, this one here. Uh, so, as I say, I'm going to go with this aspect ratio here, and I'll just start putting down some simple washes onto watercolour paper. So we've seen the beautiful scene of the River X that I wanted to paint. 
and this time I just thought I'd give you a brief overview of some of the experimental stages I sometimes take when working towards a finished painting. So here's my first experiment. In this painting I've used quite harsh boundaries between dark and light, which is a style I often use. But I took this painting to this stage and I kind of felt, well, OK, this is, this is interesting, but it's not really the effect I want. For experiment two, I used acrylic paint, but applied it in very thin washes, just like you would if you were using watercolour paint. And I just put down some initial tones and shapes. And again, I felt, although I could continue this painting and make something interesting from it, not really the look I was after to capture the scene. I did another quick test piece. This is a bush on the edge of the water. Again, putting the acrylic down in very thin washes. And I may well return to that technique in the future. So all of these experiments, although I won't use them now, they will inform future work. And it's always, it's always good to explore new ideas. Experiment four, and this is the one I'm most happy with and the one I'm going to go forward with. And you can see here I'm using a range of techniques. So in the distance, I've applied the paint in very thin layers and included very little detail to push the distant hills back into the painting. And then the foreground trees and bushes, I've started to describe in more detail with a range of different techniques and colours to make each one of them distinct. I've made the water extremely blue, far more blue and deep blue than it is in reality, but I like that effect. I've also started to describe the reflections, and I'm now going to pop this painting back onto the easel and work it up to completion. So the painting is pretty much now complete and here it is so far and you can see that for the bushes on the left side of the river I've deliberately depicted those in a very different way to the bushes on the right side of the river and I've also kept the distant hills far less detailed than the landscape in the foreground. So apart from a few finishing touches and signing the painting, all I need to do now is put the painting on an easel outside and I can photograph it, put the image straight up on the website and I'll show you how to look at that image in high resolution so that you can look at the different brushwork I've used on one side of the river to the other, for example. So if you'd like to have a look at the painting, simply go to my website, which is mikejory.com, click on the link, continue to galleries, and then you can either scroll down to the landscapes gallery and then click on the image that you want to look at, in this case the painting of Along the River. And you can see that if you hover the mouse over the image a green box appears. If you then click on that box it will display a high resolution image of that little extract of the painting. So you can compare the brushwork on the left to the brushwork on the right to the brushwork in the distance, for example. The other way to find the painting is to simply type in river in the search box, hit return, and then you'll get a selection of paintings from my portfolio which feature a river. And again, you can click on the image that you want to look at. OK, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I've got a lot of different ideas for different styles of videos coming along, different types of paintings. So 
Please remember to subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to get in contact through my Facebook page, Art by Mike Jory, or my Twitter account, which is also Art by Mike Jory. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.